My name is Julianna Nicolasian, and also with me is Tanya Fincham. We're with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at the OSU Library. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 14th, 2011, and we're in Hugo, Oklahoma, interviewing Joel Mashburn. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Could you tell us uh, where you were born, where you grew up? Okay. I was born here in Hugo. Uh, they used to have a hospital downtown above the bank that's downtown, and I was born on the, down there. Grew up here. Uh, the only time I have not lived in Hugo is I went to Weatherford, Oklahoma for uh, uh, schooling. Went out there for four years to the college, got my pharmacy degree, and moved back here, and I've been here ever since. And what year were you born? I was born in 47. Okay. Mm -hmm. And graduated from high school? Graduated from high school in 65 and graduated from college in uh, 69. So, so you spent your, your whole life here in Hugo for the most part? My whole life here. Came back in 69, and that's when I started working in the pharmacy in 69. And how did you get interested in becoming a pharmacist? Uh, this guy that owned uh, Palace Drugstore downtown, he, uh, uh, I, I knew him, and he told me that if, uh, if I'd go to pharmacy school that he would give me a, a, a job. And I thought, well, that's, that's a pretty good deal. So I went to pharmacy school. And then, you know, and I've, I've my... Uh, I like science and math better than I like English or something like that. So pharmacy fit what I needed more than some other degrees. And your uh, first pharmacy after school was at the Palace? Palace Drugstore. Okay. I worked at Palace Drugstore from 69 to uh, 98. And uh, the guy that owned it passed away. And I, he, I, he sold, or he had a stroke. And then so he sold it to me. And then he passed away, and then in uh, Christmas Eve, 1998, it uh, burned up. There's a thing we think a natural gas explosion in. It was real cold that winter, and we think that when the furnace came on, then it just blew up. So, um, you know, living in a small town, we was uptown at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the guy that on the other drugstore down the street, which we were real close friends, Mr. SQ, uh, he come up there, and we're standing across the street watching a pharmacy burn and he said uh, well what are you going to do and I said I don't know he said well you can come to work for me if you want to and I said that sounds like a good deal so I went to work for him so I had a job before the drugstore quit burning up I had another job and Mr. Eskew's pharmacy was called City Drug City Drug and I'm that's where I'm working today went to work there in uh, January 99 I've been there ever since well, as a pharmacist, you have really close uh, interaction with the community. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you probably have your, your pulse on what's going on in Hugo. Pretty much so. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about living here and growing up here, your first circus memory. Uh, the first circus memory I remember is back when we were little kids, the circus, I assume the circus did, but they had over at our um, park, they had some cages with lines in them. And, and I, we lived we lived away from the park, but at night you could hear those lions roaring. And, and that's really the first, you know, interaction I had with the circus. Uh, of course, in, then in school, uh, the lady that owns the circus right now, she's just a year older than I am. And I knew her in school. So, you know, I, I knew about the circus life and, and that sort of thing. And, and did you have many friends? I know a lot of the kids were probably on the road a lot, and then they'd come back mm -hmm. to Hugo. Did you have interactions with a lot of the circus? Uh, I had interactions with some of them. Uh, they, a lot of them were customers at the drugstore. Uh, Lily Goyle, uh, her daddy was a horse trainer, and uh, you know their family traded with us uh, uh, a lot. And I knew her and. Uh, her daddy actually, at one time, we had a little horse and he trained it for us to, you know, do a few little tricks, lay down and step up on a deal and, you know, just things like that, which was real nice. And um, so I knew them. The Rawls family, um, they was, you know, uh, Mr. and Miss Rawls, they had like five or six kids. And uh, I knew that family. And uh, some of that family, actually, some of the girls in that family, uh, actually worked at the drugstore part-time when they was going to school. 
So, uh, you know, I had a close reaction to them. And, of course, David Rawls still lives here today. And, uh, you know, he's ran the circus. And then after he retired from that, he was city manager for a while. Now he's retired from that. So he's finally got retired now. But uh, David and his sisters and brothers, I've known them ever since we were kids. So, I, I, you know, I knew that they went off and worked on the circus and came back. Uh, you mentioned training, um, mm -hmm. you know, which often happens in, in small towns. Mm -hmm. Explain to me that process. Well, um, it's just in a small town, you uh, uh, you know people and, and they you, you know what you need, so you know exactly who to go to. And uh, they'll, you know, they'll help you find something or do something like that. And, you know, like we had this horse that needed to be trained and we knew that uh, Mr. Wool was a great horse trainer. And uh, so we worked out a deal with him to train our little horse. And, you know, he did a fantastic job. It's just, uh, you just know, you know, and that's the <clears throat> advantage of having uh, the circus around is that uh, there's different occupations there that a lot of people don't understand don't see so it's 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 quite a bit different so that's a good segue can you talk a little bit about some of those occupations oh some of those occupations uh, uh the good friend of mine another good friend mike gallagher he came to his family came to town because of the circus his mother worked for the circus years ago and he never did actually after he got out of school he never did actually work for him but you know he could uh, he was he was great on a trampoline. He could do all kinds of tricks on a trampoline because that's what he learned as a kid. And then later he got into uh, uh, selling uh, cotton candy, and and that's a that's a tr uh, trade he learned with the circus. You know, and he'd have a, it, like we'd have a parade or something. He'd set up a little stand and sell cotton candy, and uh, you know that was it. And then later he got into selling snow cones and ice cream, and it and that all developed from his. Uh, uh, being with the circus and uh, and doing that, and of course, you know, I've uh, uh, a friend of mine that works for the circus right now. That lives, he actually is from Peru, and uh, you know, he go home when the circus is not working. But he usually, sometimes he's two or three weeks before he goes home, and then sometimes he cuts back here two or three weeks before they go out, and uh, he stays with us. And uh, it's been real interesting to get to know him. Uh, he's a grown man and, you know, he's had many other jobs in Peru and he tells us about Peru, but, you know, he helps with the concession stands and, uh, helps them with the money. And he, uh, the people that go into the tent and sell, well, he kind of helps, he gets them their stuff and takes the money from them and, and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, that's an occupation, uh, that they learn. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, I always kid, the uh, Sometimes they come back and, you know, and we got, uh, you, you, you know, I knew one of the clowns, you know, he's just an ordinary guy until he puts on his, his makeup and his, his, you know, and, and of course they all got personalities. All those clowns have their own little personality and their own little makeup, but he's a real neat guy. He came and went to church with his son and really neat guy. Then when he puts on his little clown deal, he's got a whole different personality. And, uh, so that's pretty good. And, uh, of course, Barbara, the, the lady that owns the circus now, uh, Barbara Bird, uh, like I said, I went to school with her. And, uh, you know, I've known her two kids since they were born. And uh, it's interesting to watch them run the circus now. And uh, the best part to me about the circus when I go to it is um, is the before and after. It's, it's great to go early enough to watch them set up that great big tent and then watch them take everything down and put it up because, uh, you know, they move. A lot of times they'll show one day and then move. But every time they get through with something, they pack it and get it ready to put up. And then as soon as the circuit's over, they start folding up the bleachers and all that. And then uh, they got stakes in the ground for to hold the tent up. And uh, the elephant is trained to pull up those stakes. And they got a harness on the elephant and a deal that wraps around the elephant's leg and and then it, uh, they wrap a chain around that stake, and that elephant will walk over to that stake and raise its leg and just pull that stake right out of the, the ground. And the elephant is so trained uh, that it uh, it knows where the next stake's going to be. 
they'll pull that one out and that guy just kind of walks with the elephant and it just walks right over there and puts its foot right by it so that guy can wrap the chain around it and it just lifts up its foot and that thing just comes right out of the ground and and you know and that's that's what's so fun you know and, you know we see people in town say well he's the elephant trainer or uh they had a real tall uh guy that did all the announcing you see him in town you know what he did so it's it's you know we've just always had those people around no desire as a high school student to get into the circus yourself no no desire to do that i do have uh barbara has a friend uh jan that you know uh, back years ago when she was younger uh she would go with them and, and stay with barbara for two or three weeks at a time and it, I always thought that would be neat, but I never did do it. They worked hard. And let me tell you, they just scary to watch them work. Boy, they work hard. Mm-hmm. When they're on the road, you know, it's a day and night. And uh, it, it's it's a tough deal. So, Well, do you see um, when the circus comes back from the road, do you see uh, – any contributions they make to the Hugo community? Oh, yeah, they, they make a lot of contributions. You know, I even, uh, through the drugstore over the years, I've had many friends that work for the circus, and, and uh, I, I've actually, when I would keep their medicine, I mean, mail their medicine to them while they're on the road, and that, I still do it with the Bird family, with Barbara and her family and the, the kids. Uh, they fortunately right now that the kid's grandmother lives here uh gary's mother lives here so she comes by and get their medicine and mails it to them but i still feel all their medicine year round and uh for his contributions to the town they've done lots of things for the town uh, they've, they've given money to the uh, school foundation uh as you noticed out here in the library the the elephants and all that that's all from the circus they gave all of that stuff over at the elementary school. They in the library over there. They fixed a real nice deal and, and donated that. Uh, that we have a uh, we made a walking path out at the edge of town by our softball fields, and we call it the Elephant Walk. And uh, they've donated a lot of things there, a lot of exercise equipment, a lot of benches, and uh, you know great things. And when we had the grand opening out there, uh, they. Uh, they brought an elephant out there and let the elephant walk around in front of everybody while we walked and made the, I don't even know how, it's probably about a half a mile walk. I don't know how far it is, maybe a quarter. But we all, you know, all the community showed up and we walked around and the elephant walked in front of us and all that. Um, I've actually, uh, one of my hobbies is uh, Christmas time. I like to play Santa Claus, let my beard get a little bit longer and, I love to play Santa Claus, and out at our nursing home, one of our nursing homes out there, uh, we we bring the elephant out there uh, at Christmas time, and I get on the elephant at, at, at Santa Claus, and we walk around the nursing home, and all of them that are able to come to the doors, or some of them can come outside, and some of them just can come to the doors and and uh, see the elephant. We've done that two or three times, and they brought the elephant out there to do that. You know, and we're probably one of the few towns in the world that um, when we have our Christmas parade, you know, Santa Claus usually comes on the fire truck or something like that. Ours comes on an elephant. I mean, they've been doing that for years. I mean, that's and that's just a donation that they do. I mean, that's not many towns got Santa Claus coming through on an elephant. And uh, it's it's real neat. It's different. And uh, and of course, the elephants are fun animals because they're so well trained that you know people think, well, they gotta make them do stuff. They just talk to them just like humans. I've seen them when uh, at the circus and the elephant ride. You know, they have those, and they come up to this little dock so kids can get on. Well, sometimes they they're not close enough, and they'll call the elephant by name and say, "Get over here!" And the elephant will scoot over a little bit. I mean, they don't touch them or hook anything. They don't do anything. Just talk to them. And those elephants are so well trained, they know exactly what to do. So, but they, as you know, back to your question, you said, uh, I, I don't even know all the stuff that they've done for the community. Of course, they've got a lot of property here and they pay taxes on that. And they've built some, uh, the daughter, the granddaughters have built some nice houses. There's a lot of houses in town that the circus people own. Uh, they've got the, uh, but they give a lot to the schools and uh, the public places like the library. And, 
you know, they've been real active. And like I say, in the, when we have a parade, something like that, they're always got something to, if they're here, then see a lot of parades we have, they're, they're gone, so they don't have anything to put in it. Like we had a rodeo parade the other day where they were, our, everything's gone right now. But when they, they're here in the wintertime and we have something, they're always active to do it. And, uh, you know, down by the depot, they, we have a, they're trying to build a museum here and uh, they'll set up almost a miniature circus down there to, to raise money for that circus museum. And it's just all, you know, whatever they raise, they just give to the museum. Can you tell when the circus comes back to town? Uh, yeah, I can because I know some of them is the main thing. Uh, and and if, you know, I... Uh, Does traffic increase or... Not really. The, the, the one thing that you notice is, of course, they live at the edge of town. And, and some of those people that work for the circus don't really have transportation. Because they really don't need any transportation because they, every, all their transportation is through the circus. And so when they come to town, you see them uh, uh, walking to Walmart or, or they'll drive the, you, you'll see the circus. Uh, they got a little van that's got uh, Kelly Miller Circus on it and uh, or two or three of them. They don't have just one, but they got two. You'll see it at Walmart or uptown or something and you know that those guys are uptown buying stuff and that sort of thing. Do you have children? Yes, I've got children. I've got um, five children. Got some grandkids. I even got some great grandkids. I was fortunate today that two of my great grandkids came to town and surprised me, and so I just had lunch with them. So that was nice. And uh, that's one thing we do uh, is is we go to the circus a lot. And, of course, I know them so well that they kind of give me a little privilege to get get me a good seat to watch it. So, but I take my grandkids all the time. To various places or just when they're performing? Uh, I've been to various places. It's mostly just uh, uh, around here close. Uh, I've got a granddaughter that lives down at uh, Fort Worth. And uh, so a lot of times when I'm around Dallas, Fort Worth, I've gone down there and uh, – uh, then I've been to Durant, I've been to Gainesville, you know, I've been to a lot of different places. My daughter lived, that lives in uh, Rogers, Arkansas, when they showed up there, of course, she went out to see them and talked to everybody. And, you know, it's just like, you know, just, we're close friends with them and we just love to go and uh, watch it. And do you have brothers and sisters? Got brothers and sisters. I've got uh, two older brothers and one younger sister. My two older brothers live in Texas, one in uh, Conroe, Texas, and one in uh, uh, Austin. And my sister lives here. My sister works for the school. She's a secretary for the school. She's done that for years. And are they as fond of the circus as you? Uh, probably not as close to them as I am. I've just, uh, through the years, have you know, I've done business with them and dealt with them, and uh, I've just... I've just got a closer relationship probably with them. Well, since the 69? 69. 69. Until now, can you, have you noticed any changes or how things might have changed? The, the thing that has, a couple of things have changed about the circus since 69 is, is in the olden days, the, uh, their equipment wasn't too good sometimes and, uh, they'd start off and go you start off on a, you know the year and go from here to Paris and you know there you'd go if you was going to half of their equipment would break down before they got there and they just didn't keep their equipment up like they do now. Uh, since Gary and Barbara's been running it, they, they've got much better equipment and uh, uh, it functions a lot better. Uh, the downside to it is there's a couple of downsides to the big circus because we've always you know in the last few years we've had a little circus and a big circus we've had two circuses here and uh, that's why we refer to them or most of us do the big one and the little one of course the little one has reduced itself down to a one ring deal the one that david ran the before he retired and uh, it was it was great and it doesn't take up a lot of room but the one that uh, the carson and barnes the one that the millers or birds run uh, that the Miller started. Uh, it's a big 
five ring circus, a big tent, and they've got lots of animals and lots of trucks. So they have to have a big space to put it in. And, and that's one of the things that makes it difficult for them going places sometimes is um, some of these towns, there's less and less vacant lots that are big enough for it. And, and so that's made it real hard on it. And of course, what's made it hard on them the last few years is the price of gas and diesel has just has gone up so much that it's, it costs them more to travel. And uh, with the economy down, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a little harder to draw some of those big crowds that they used to have. But, um, you know, they, um, they, they still, still work it and give it a shot. And, it's amazing. Well, does the local paper keep, paper keep track of all of these activities? Uh, they they do a lot of stories on them. Um, it's uh, you know they they don't during the year when they're gone they it's not too many stories that they say but you know if something and but any time that they uh, they have the community that like that there's a, and every year when they. Uh, uh, come back we have a uh, uh, circus day welcome them back with the uh, city officials and all that and uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty big day and then that the circus people get up and tell us where they've been and how many miles they've gone and uh, that sort of thing and uh, that's that's always a big uh, it's a big event when they come back and do that so If Hugo did not have the circus, what do you think the town would be like? Never have thought about it. Um, of course, we couldn't call ourselves Circus City USA, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, We've just always had it, so I never thought about it not ever being here. I mean, they've been my whole life they've been out there at the corner of 93 and Kirk Street, and... Uh, you know, and right now we've last weekend, matter of fact, we were went to eat at a place out there and it's coming back and, you know, where they have their elephant uh, deal out there. Um, we, that they had it was so warm that the elephants were outside throwing hay around, trying to throw hay on his back so he could stay. You know, not every place you can go and drive down the road and look and see a big elephant. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, like, um, a couple of times we've had uh, uh, Babe Ruth baseball come to town for like the nine year olds come here for a regional playoff mm -hmm. and have seven or eight teams from all over Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. And uh, you know when when those kids came, they uh, let us go out to the Elephant uh, Foundation and uh, put us on a tram and and drove us around and let us see the elephant and the lady told us all about elephants and about raising them and taking care of them and that's something we were able to do for those baseball kids that a lot of other towns couldn't do mm -hmm. i mean they came to play baseball but they also got to go see an elephant and and find out a little bit about the elephants they told they told talked about them and all that and uh, of course uh, you know, they've had some baby elephants, and that's really neat to go see one of those little baby elephants. They are so cute. It is just unbelievable. You just think it takes two years for them to, it takes two years for a mama to have a baby elephant. So, and and it's very hard to breed elephants in captivity. Right. So they've, uh, and uh, of course, they've got a little, about a three year old elephant that travels with them. And, uh, He's about halfway out. He loves to perform, Oh, You can watch him, and he loves to perform, but he's a little bit ornery, so you got to kind of watch him. But And, you know, and when you go, and if you if if you watch those elephants, uh, watch their eyes, they watch people. Boy, they look around. when they're Even when they're performing, they look around to see what's going on and see people. It's, it's pretty amazing. Now, the other story I'll tell you and, uh, is, uh, of course, being in the pharmacy business, uh, we're always dealing with medicine and stuff, you know. Uh, we've uh, we've doctored the elephants. Uh, you know, one of them got burned one time, and uh, uh, 
of course, you know, we can feel medicine that the vet writes. So uh, one of them got burned one time, so we got some burn ointment. And, uh, of course, the only difference is, uh, you know, we sell you a little bitty tube. Well, a little bitty tube not going to go very far on a big elephant. you got to have, you know, a big bucket of burn, elephant, burn medicine put on the elephant. So it takes a lot more. And then uh, the baby elephants, we've doctored them two or three times when they've got different... Uh, problems that they've had uh, we'll we'll try to rake up enough uh, initial dose for them before they can get it in a bigger bulk and it you know it's the same way as the burn medicine it takes a lot of it just to give one dose of it to the elephant but uh, some of the babies have you know had this or that and we've, we've been able to get medicine gathered up to doctor them do you have to keep any any sort of types of medicine on hand? No, we really don't keep anything special or anything like that. But uh, where do you go to uh, get a big old bucket of bird medicine? Well, you just order. You order a. You know, they say we need some. I said, well, I got this pound jar. We'll start with it, and then you order about five of those, five pound jars to send out there. Of course, you know we order every day so we can get it the next day. So that's that's how you do it. You know, instead of that little bitty tube that you get pound jars of you know for a person will last forever but you know when you doctor an elephant you need four or five of those real quick to smear on there the pharmaceutical company is yeah. probably wondering what's going on yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> so uh, but it's uh, you know in the baby elephants they get they get a viral infection that's what messes with them and it's a uh, there's a some kind of virus, and I don't even know the name of it, but there's some kind of virus that is fairly common in baby elephants in zoos and that sort of thing. And and uh, so we just, uh, antiviral medicine, just oral antiviral medicine that we take, we'd get some of those and, you know, just up the dose. It takes a bunch of pills for them, where it, for us it just takes one. But that's, that's what we doctor them with. Do you ever have to add any flavoring? No, no. Just curious. No, nope, don't Bu- have to. They like the bubblegum flavor? Don't have to do the bubblegum flavor <laughs> or anything for them. So. I don't know if it comes in peanut. Uh, peanut flavor. If it comes in peanut, they'd love that because, uh, you know, and, and if you can tell I'm, I fasc- I'm fascinated by the elephants, but, you know, if you've ever fed them, they can take that trunk and it's just like a hand to them. You can, you can hand them anything and they can get it in that trunk where, you know, they can take care of it. It's amazing what they can do with that trunk. So when you retire from pharmacy, are you going to join the circus and be a clown or a ticket taker? Or well, you know, I, th- I thought, you know, in the past I would love to be, because, you know, I, I do Santa Claus. I dress up and do that. And in the past I thought, you know, it would be fun to dress up and be a clown. Uh, that, At least for one season. One season, that would that would be fun, but I doubt it. I'm too too much of a homebody you know you can tell that because i had never left here so it's hard to for hard for me to travel all year so but you know i that's one of the things in the past i thought that would be neat for one 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 year just to be a clown and put on that makeup and go out there and try to entertain people i think it'd be great you know some other town folk that actually do that on on occasion not uh no, not really. I don't know of any that actually do that. Uh, uh, not really. And and you know, part of it is is when they're out on the road working, everybody's got two or three jobs, and uh, they don't have a lot of. Um, if you're out there with them, they they're going to expect you to work. And you know, it's not a vacation. Why do you think Hugo is a, a friendly place for circus folk? I don't know. They just were always here. I mean, they were here when I was a little kid, and they just always been here, and uh, uh, we've just interacted with them. I mean, they've sent their kids to our schools, and, uh, you know, Barbara graduated from high school here and uh, uh, then went off to college, her her. Two daughters graduated from here and then went off to college. And that's where Barbara met her husband. Was he, she went to college and met him, and he came back and went to work for him. But uh, I don't know. It's just always been a. It's it's a. You know, it, it might have been in the early days. It was a, a 
cheap place to buy some land. Um, it's uh, fairly in the middle of the the United States. So, you know, one year they, they usually what they do is one year they'll go back east and up north and that way and then kind of Midwest and then come home. And the next year then they'll go to Texas and out west and uh, northwest and Midwest and come home. So, you know, it's right here in Hugo, it's equal distance basically to those two places. Um, it's, you know, not as warm as Florida is because Florida's got much, many more circuses than we do, or back in the day they did. But it's warm enough that uh, even in the wintertime, they can get some of the animals out, at, you know, in, in the, especially the elephants. The elephants don't like cold weather, but they, it's warm enough during the wintertime they can kind of get them out and get them a little exercise. And um, it's a small community. So, you know, I think they've just felt comfortable here. Uh, everybody, uh, Barbara's mother and daddy, everybody knew them. Uh, they were just part of the community. And like I say, my Uncle Herman, Charles's daddy, had a dealership here and they bought cars for, they bought cars from him for years. Um, you know, they, when they'd come back with a, you know, buy a car or whatever. And, and Uncle Herman knew him real well. And he uh, he went to see him in a lot of different places too. He was real close to him. And anytime they were around close or something, he would go see him. Or if he was off working or someplace, he would go see him uh, quite a bit. And uh, so uh, I don't know. It's just, I, th I like to think we're a friendly community. And I think I like to think we're small enough that they don't, it's not like a big city and they've got plenty of room, plenty of land here because they own quite a bit of land out there. Well, what keeps you in Hugo? You could you could have gone anywhere? Uh, I just love Hugo. I mean, love small town. You know, I've, uh, like I say, been in business here. I've been on uh, uh, like the Industrial Authority, Choctaw County Industrial Authority. I was chairman of that for, uh, for about almost oh, seven or eight years, maybe longer. I was on it for a long time. My uncle Herman, he was on it a long time before that, and I was on it. And uh, you know, I love uh, I love my local church uh, here, and I love knowing people and seeing people. And uh, you know, and I've I've been fortunate enough to have a job where I could stay here. A lot of a lot of people don't in our small communities now. That's one of the things that hurt us is is we don't have some of the jobs for the young people. Unfortunately for me, it would. I had one here. Well, do you do you have that favorite circus memory when you think of the circus, or when you get together with family that you like to tell? Um, probably my, my favorite me memory of the circus is is uh, years ago. Uh, of course, you know I don't know how many elephants they own now, but they still own quite a few elephants because. You know, and, and it's a the elephants is, is a business with them because they rent them out to other circuses. A lot of the other circuses that perform have their elephants, and uh, of course now they're breeding elephants, and that's a real big thing. And uh, uh, probably my biggest memory is back in the other old days when some of these uh, uh, when they they carried about twenty five elephants with them. On, a, on when they went on on the road, and uh, uh, they would bring those elephants around that ring there, and then to bring them down there, and then they would, uh, I mean, just in the walkway there, they'd bring them out there, and uh, those elephants would rear up on each other, and stand up, and then raise their trunks, and that to me that's that's a beautiful sight, uh, especially when there's like twenty five of them. And back then they had a bunch of young, bunch of the mama elephants they've got now were young teenage elephants back then. Elephants age kind of goes the same way as humans. They're babies and teenagers and then grown. And, and a lot of those elephants that I remember years ago uh, are the mama elephants now. They were, they got a whole bunch of teenage elephants at one time. And, uh, you know, and then I remember uh, when the first, their first baby was born. Uh, I heard about it, so uh, Dr. was alive then. Barbara's daddy, who ran the circus, and he needed some medicine one day, and so I I took him some medicine. I delivered him some medicine personally out there after work, and I said, "Now, 
I want to see the baby since I've come this far. I want to go see the baby because it was just three or four days old. And, of course, DR, he was a funny guy anyway. He said, well, you know what it's going to cost you. He said, I don't let anybody see that baby without paying because that's the way I make a living. And uh, so it was a big joke, you know. But uh, So I got in his truck, and we went over to see the baby. And it was it was so exciting to see that little baby because I knew how hard they'd worked to get a baby. And, and I, you know, I, I know how much trouble it is, and they've sent – you know, they go to special vets, and they've sent vets to uh, Washington State to learn how to artificially inseminate an elephant. And, you know, they've, they've spent a lot of money doing that. And uh, that was, it was so great to see that little baby. And uh, I just, I love the little babies. But the elephants is probably the thing that I remember. And of course, you know, they don't have them anymore, but they had a lot of tigers and lions back in the, the animals back in the old days. And, uh, you know, I've known some of the trapeze artists, uh, one of them that um, uh, they were at church the other day. There was a, a couple of the trapeze artists were at church. He's not working with them this year, but he has in the past. And he'd been in Las Vegas working and he was home. So he was at church with us. And it was kind of interesting to talk to him. So Good memories. Good memories. Great memories. And like I say, Barbara and I were real good friends in school with the guy that runs it now. And of course, I know, know their two daughters and uh, real, you know, personally. And so it, it's just it's just fun to know them. We hear, hear Mr. Miller was quite a character. Mr. Miller was quite a character. He was uh, quite a kidder. And, you know, and, and one of the things he liked to do is, uh, uh, you know, he he. Never did just really dress up. He always just, you know, wore old slouchy looking clothes and he loved to dip or chew chew them back on. But he, you know, had a towel on most of the time, but then the time might have four or five big old spots on it where the tobacco's dripped on it, but that didn't bother him. And, uh, you know, he loved to go in places that didn't know him and you look at him, you think, you know, ask to buy a car or something and they would uh, look at him and say, well, you know, how's he going to buy a car? And he, he got the kid people around. And it was just like when I went to see the baby elephant, the first thing he said, you know, well, it's going to cost you because I don't let anybody see it without me paying. That's why I make my money, you know. So, um, And then the other part of that is my good friend uh, was out there with him, the guy that worked for the circus that took care of their money for a long time. Um, he said, yeah, next thing he'll be charging you to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but he was Dr. Was quite a guy. He was quite a character. He was, a, you know, he, he was a. If you didn't know him, you'd think he was a grouchy old man. But that's just kind of way he wanted people to perceive him. But now he ran a tight ship on the when he was working. They had to work for him. Did you have much interaction with his wife? Uh, yeah, she was just a quieter gal, and real sweet. Uh, she just, she was just, you know, and she stayed here a lot here after the kids got uh, going to school and you know used to years and years ago they would put their kids in school late and take them out early and they could still manage to get through school well and you know how school has changed since then now you can't do that so um, she would stay here and keep the kids and let them go to school and then as soon as school was out she'd go stay for a while and uh, you know and the she she stayed here more than she traveled with them in the days I knew her. When she was young, she didn't. She was part of it. But as she got older, she stayed here. And, you know, they've got a real nice house out there and a real nice place. And You know, and they've, uh, uh, like when one of the daughters uh, uh, was graduating, where they had a big party for the class out at their house and that sort of thing. They're real giving people, real loving people. Very community oriented. Too. Very community oriented, and they've, you know, like I say, they've given, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't get into all of that, but I, I just know that they've given a lot to the community. They've given a lot to the schools. They've given a lot to the foundation. They've, you know, like I say, I've told you earlier, they, they've done places in this in the community where to help that uh, some of the rest of us would probably wouldn't have done, and uh, they've they spent some money. And uh, down at the one place I didn't tell you about, down at the old depot, there's, they donated a great big picture of Dr. and his wife that's on the wall down there. 
at our depot museum or it's actually in the cafe connected to the depot museum it's uh that's real nice and uh they did. and you know we've got Cir angie circus city diner here that's where i ate today and uh, she's got all kinds of uh, pictures of them they you know people have given her all that stuff pictures of the circuses uh advertisements when they're coming to town she's got all kinds of stuff that they've donated to her and uh you know, is is because she's called it Circus City Diner. You know, they've donated a lot of things to her. Route cards. That's one of the things that's different that a lot of people don't know about. In the olden days, they printed up these cards and tell uh, where they were and what day and that sort of thing. And they'd do about um, two weeks at a time on them, and uh, they gave them to different people so they'd know where the circus was and. And back in the day when they had that, I, I always got a set of those. They always sent me a set of those. And uh, Did so. you keep them? No, I didn't keep them. I would probably wish I had up the uh, Ted Bowman, a friend of mine that worked for the circus, the one that took care of their money for years and years, I got to be real close friends with. Um, uh, his hobby was collecting route cards. And he collected them not only from this circus, but a lot all the circuses he could. And uh, I think there's a big circus museum someplace up in the Midwest. And uh, when he died, he donated that whole collection of rap cards to them, which was worth a bunch of money. And uh, but uh, Ted was, uh, I got to sending him medicine. And uh, at Palace Drug, we always had uh, Jolly Rancher sitting there by the counter for the kids or whoever wanted it. And every time Ted come in, you know, he'd get some of them. So I got to, uh, when I'd pack his medicine to mail to him, I got to packing it with Jolly Ranchers. So he said that was worth more than the medicine was to get that box of Jolly Ranchers, you know. It wasn't a big deal. And, it, you know, he could go buy Jolly Ranchers anytime he wanted to, but it was just fun that, uh, you know, he enjoyed it and I enjoyed sending him Jolly Ranchers. And when he'd come to town, we'd go eat and, and, and now this is this is a strange deal, but I'll tell you how close some of the circus stuff is. Um, when Ted died, um, we had a funeral for him, and another guy here, who Ted didn't have a family, so he he kind of adopted other people, and a family here was kind of his caretaker, and and you know they he appointed them to take care of his estate. And uh, they still live here. They used to work with circus, but they live here now. And uh, and this other guy that lives, still lives here, um, he doesn't have a family either. And uh, I was a pallbearer at Ted's funeral, and after it was over, uh, this other guy came up to me. He said, you know, I hadn't thought about it, but he said, when I die, I might not have any pallbearers. He said, would you be my pallbearer? You know, and that was, Ted's been dead probably 10 years. And that guy said, and I, I've always, I told him, yeah, I'll do that. And probably that guy trades with me at the store, and he was in the store three or four months ago, and he, he said, said something to ask me about it, if I remembered him asking me. And I said, yeah, I remember. He said, okay. But then that's just a strange thing about how close some of us get. And I'm not real close to this guy, but he knew that I loved the circus and knew him. And, uh, you know, that's just a funny twerk, I guess you might say. Hmm. That just gives you some idea how close we are sometimes. Any other names you want to mention that from that are not well, no longer with us? Uh, of course, I mentioned Mike Gallagher, his uh, mother and Miss Gallagher, and his sister Tiny. Tiny, they called her Tiny. She was a trapeze artist, and she worked for him for many years. I remember her. Uh, Lily Goyle's father that taught that trained the horses, and uh, you know they were his. Uh, her mother and daddy were real nice people. Uh, of course, D.R. Miller and his wife, they were great people. And, uh, and of course, you know, we had a big parade when he died. Did, has anybody told you about that? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if y'all want to hear this part or not. But, uh, he died. They were out in uh, uh, Colorado, out that way someplace when he died. And uh, he had already told them that when he died, he wanted to have a a circus you know he wanted to be a it wanted to be a big deal so um they embalmed his body and then they put it in a uh, uh holding place a cold cold place 
and they kept it there. Then they went on and did their, their yearly circus run. And then when they came back to town, then uh, they sent for the body or went and got the body and uh, brought it back. And they set up a uh, uh, tent out here where they usually have the circus. They set up a circus tent. And he had his funeral inside the circus tent. And then they uh, uh, put it on a, a circus wagon, an old restored circus wagon pulled by horses. And... Uh, from out here on this side of town, which would be the north side of town, um, to where the, we always have the circus, uh, they had a big par parade procession all the way down to uh, the cemetery that y'all went to on the south side of town. And uh, uh, he wanted it to be a big production, and that's what they did. It was, it was quite a... People were lined up along the streets to, to see him pass, and, but... Uh, it was, uh, but they set up the circus tent and they had the funeral inside the circus tent. That's what he wanted to do. So, uh, and you know, I I can't I can't think of some of the other people. Uh, Ted Bowman, uh, Ted, um, uh, you know, he worked for him for a long time, and uh, Ted and I got to be real close friends. And like I say, every time he'd come back, we'd go eat and do things like that. And I sent him medicine the whole time he was on the road and. Uh, he was a great guy. He was a uh, he, he bookkeeper. I mean, he was excellent. He could he knew figures frontwards and backwards, and he he was a nice guy. And of course, Barbara and Gary Bird. I, like I said, I went to school with Barbara, and uh, you know she uh, uh, was real sweet, still real sweet. And I'm no I'm no ever since she married Gary and brought him back here. I've been friends with him and. Now Gary's mother and daddy has moved here, and I got to be friends with them. And uh, of course, the two girls, uh, uh, yeah, I've known them since they were babies. And uh, so, you know, and I've been out to their house before, and uh, especially when Ted was alive, Ted, I, he, I went out there quite a bit because Ted stayed with them even after he came home. He stayed out the house with them because he wasn't married, didn't have a family either, and. Uh, so, and then of course the Rawls family, uh, David Rawls, his mother and daddy and his sisters, two of his sisters worked for us at the drugstore. Uh, Margie was, uh, the oldest sister. She worked, uh, she worked for us and excellent, you know, and then the younger sister, and I can't even think of her name right now. She worked for us and they were, you know, after school on Saturdays and that sort of thing. So, so we've always been real close to them because of things like that. Just a tight, close knit community. It's a close knit community. They're, the circus is a close knit. They they take care of each other, and uh, they know each other, uh, and it works out real good. Well, is there anything else you'd like to mention before we close out here today? I don't know. I mean, it's like I say, it's it's been fun living here with the circus, and I've been to the circus many times, and I still go if I get a chance, and uh, you know, it's it's fun. And they've been good for the community. They've really, other years, they've made some money, but they've put a lot of money back into the community. They've donated a lot of money to the community. And anytime we need something like an elephant for a Christmas parade, they're right there to do it. Um, for a nursing home, they did that. And uh, so. Good life. It's a good life. It's a hard, it's a tough life. It, they work hard, travel many miles. Well, we appreciate your time.